If you are a freelancer, an agency, or any business that works in B2B and you have clients, you might need to send proposals to those clients. And if that's the case, then this video might be useful for you because I'm gonna show you how you can create a proposal generation system within Notion that you can easily integrate within your own data structure and databases in the Notion ecosystem. For example, linking proposals to your client database or projects and so on. There are three stages that you're gonna follow in this video. The first stage will be building databases. That's why we're gonna lay out the structure of the two key databases that power the system. In the second step, we're gonna create the template for proposals where you can see all the line items that you will include in your proposals. And finally, we're gonna create a button so that with a simple click, you can create a new proposal and all the line items that you might have by default, if that's applicable to your case within Notion. Step number one is about building the databases and in this system we have two core databases one is proposals and one is line items i already created these databases but they aren't structured yet so we're gonna look at the structure and build it together in this video and i use this slash command database full page to create those databases so let's get into the proposals database first so that's a table view and in here in layout i deactivated vertical lines and wrap columns and open pages in center peak. Now let's set up the structure of this database. Let's open this page. First, we might want to have a status that is useful because in this way you can keep track of where you are at with your proposal. So right now we have statuses such as to do, that is the default one. Doing, that means you are drafting that proposal. Send to the client, accepted and declined. And let's say these are the statuses that you want to have. But of course, if you want to use this system, you can implement it and change the statuses to your own liking. You can just add options through the plus button. You can see we have three different groups in a status property in Notion, to do, in progress and complete. And within those groups, you can have multiple options that you can actually select here from the menu. Next up, we also have a relation property with the line items database, because the idea is that your proposal might be composed of multiple line items. These line items might be your different services at a fixed price or at an hourly rate, depending on your business model and pricing model, in fact. And so you can see that is a relation property that I picked from here. It is related to the line items database and it is displayed as minimal. And if you go here, we can do customize page and you will see here that we have line items shows as minimal but i can show it as property and when we look at it that's the property it's a relation type related to the line items database there is no limit in line items and we want to show this relation also on the line items database that's a two-way relationship and that is why this option is activated here and the name on the related property in the line items database is proposal so that we can see exactly which line item belongs to which proposal but we don't really want to see line items here at the very top of the proposal because actually we're going to create a template that will display those line items and their associated properties down here on the page. That will be the next step in our building process. So I will go here and do show as minimal so that it just displays here and it doesn't clutter our view at the very top of the page. Next up, we're going to add a created time property just as a metadata and created by Maybe we can also add last edited time and last edited by. For now, we can say that is enough for what we need in our simple proposal system. And for your specific case, you might need more properties, such as breaking it down into different services that you want to invoice. And that can be done. And you can implement those by adding more properties and also using rollups and formulas, which you're going to see in a second moment once we build the line items database. That will be the next step. So for now, let's keep this view as it is. Then we're going to clean things up later. Let's go back to the main page and open line items. That's the line items database. Let's give it an icon here. And we're going to go layout. Let's clean things up a bit. And create a new page. We have the name of the line item there. We're going to have tags. That is the default property that Notion displays whenever you create a new database. In this case, we may need tag if you have, for example, different services and you want to specify which line item belongs to which service. In this case, let's assume we do not need that. But what we need in line items are prices and units. So in this example, we can use 
a number property that would be price and we're going to format it in us dollars or euros whatever you're using then you can see here we have the proposal relation displaying here and that's because we added that relation before from the proposals database and we made it a two-way relationship and here we can also customize how things display and i want to show the status directly on the relation picker before the name so i'm going to reorder that just like that so the price is here and let's add another number property that is quantity so that if it's an hourly rate then you can specify how many hours if it's fixed price for a specific service line item you can just add one let's see quantity and we're going to have a formula that will be final price that will be price times quantity so we can do price times quantity and we can format this in us dollars again all right that is the line items database for now let's keep it pretty simple for this example let's now customize this view for line items then we're going to customize the view of proposals and then create a template that is step number two so in here let's add a view of line items by proposal i think that's the most useful one so that you can see exactly which line item belongs to which proposal let go we're going to group by proposal we will hide empty groups we don't want to see them and we're going to display these properties in the right order price quantity final price we can also sum the final price here and we can sum the final price there as well let's delete this and wrap this column so that we can read the name properly price quantity maybe let's do average here and average there and i would also add a few metadata in here that is created time and created by and then why not we can also add a rollup that is a rollup property that is proposal status so that we can pull from the proposal relation the status property and we want to see the original status so that if you select for example this example proposal we will see the status is tada. And we can see it here as well so that is not really that needed but by having a property we can also use this as a filter if you want to see specific line items and specific proposals from this database view so in here let's show the status and credit time and now let's add quick filters that we can do such as traded by we can have credit time we might have final price so that you can see different calculations and the proposal as well and the proposal status so now these are quick filters that you can use to look at specific information from this database view let's delete this we're going to have hidden groups that's really all we need for the line items database view in my opinion because the line items database is mostly a backend database where which you want to use to do the calculations but then the proposal database is where the main action takes place when you create proposals actually so let's get back to the proposal database and create views in here as well the first thing we want to do before doing that is actually rolling up the sum of the price of all the line items so that you can see what's the price of this proposal so for that we'll create a new property that is a roll up and it would be total price so total price is a roll up that takes data from the line items relation displaying the property final price ca and calculating the sum of that property there you go and then we see the sum of all the line items related to the proposal here so let's have maybe the first view can be by status so we're gonna go layout board and group by status center pick we can leave the other things as they are and we can show different properties that is maybe total price last edited time and created by maybe you can sort by created time and then we can also add quick filters maybe created by last edited by and total price and here you can move things around on the pipeline and we can create different views as well let's create for example a table And we can display properties like that we can hide the line items and sort by 
last edited time descending and also add quick filters here we can also calculate the median price why not and you can create as many views as you like depending on your specific needs now that is really it for building the databases that we need and that was step one in our system step two is about creating a template where we can display line items for each proposal directly inside the proposal page for that we can open the proposal surveys and create a new template right here so let's name it proposal template and we can add an icon the status would be maybe doing why not and we can go full width and down here maybe let's leave one block just to add any description that you might want to have there and down here we can add a linked database view that is linked view of database we are pulling data from the line item surveys and we want to create a new empty view in a table format that is the most user friendly in this case in my view so that you can see directly which properties are associated with each line item we don't need to yes we actually do need to display the database title let's do no vertical lines and opening center peak and you will see as properties we can leave as it is and we need to add a filter that says where proposal contains the template that is a self-referential filter as it's known in the Notion ecosystem. And that means whenever you apply this template, this filter will take the page when it's been applied. So save for everyone, that makes sure that everyone sees the same thing. And that is pretty much it. Here you can calculate how many line items we have. We can also calculate the final price as a sum. We do not need to see the proposal status and we want to see all these other stuff. Let's go back to proposal and set as default that means this template is now the default content on the page whenever you create a new proposal meaning if i were to create a new page you will see that the template is automatically applied and you can rename it here and that's really it for step number two creating a template step number three is about creating a button so that you can make things easier for yourself or for people to create proposals and this can be especially useful if you have fixed or default line items that you want to add to any of your proposals so for that maybe let's add a new block right there organize things just like that and let's do a slash button for the new latest button in notion and here we need to add a few actions assuming that you have default line items that you want to add so in that case we're going to do add page to that's action number one let's first name this button and give it an icon as well so the first step is add page to the proposals database because we want to create the proposals page first thing first the name of the proposal can be untitled that's okay the template will be applied automatically so we don't care about that and let's edit another property not really we don't need any other property to edit in this case but we do need to add another step that would be add page to in this case the line items database the name let's assume the first line item that you always have is strategy work let's say that's one of the main deliverables that you are almost always have with your clients so you want to include this by default in your proposals so that's a line item right there the proposal that's a relation property will be the new page added in proposals that's a dynamic step that allows you to link this line item with the proposal that you just created in the step above through the button so that's what you can do and if you have a fixed price for that that's what you can do here you can add the price already let's say for the sake of this example 500 and you can add the quantity one so that's the line item and you can repeat the same step 
for as many line items as you want that you have by default. And you can do three dots and duplicate below for the second line item. Let's say second line item is development work. The proposal will be new page added, so you can leave it like that. The price, you can change it here and the quantity as well. Once you're done with those default line items, you can add a last step that is open page and you want to open the new page added in proposals so that your proposal will open up and you can edit it accordingly. And that's it for the button really. So you can do done. Let's test it out. So let's add the new proposal. There you go. We have the untitled name here. We can open it in full page, control enter or command enter. The status is doing we can already see the total price that is 3000 the template was automatically applied we have the line items here on the page we can see development work to 500 strategy work 500 the quantities the final price and if you want to add a new ad hoc line items that's where you can do that so let's say this is training and documentation and here you have it you can then see the total price here and you can change the status to send once you send it to the client. You can't really share this page in this system, assuming that you want to centralize data, because if you share this, then the client needs to have access to the line item surveys, or at least to these three pages for them to see the proposal. So that's a bit of a limitation. You can work around it in some ways. I'm not going to get into that topic in this video because that's a pretty big topic of its own. There are some workaround. And if you have questions, feel free to drop them down below and I'm happy to answer specifics. And that is really how things work. You can see then in the line items database, they will have the test proposal with all the line items here. You can expand and collapse that proposal and you can see the price here. If you want to go one step further, you can add a bit more analytics to this system. For example, you might add a date property that is date accepted, where you can select the date when the client actually accepted that proposal. And then you can add a view in here that groups proposals by month or by week or by year. And then you can sum that data to summarize the total amount of proposals accepted by month, by week, by year, and so on. And that can be useful for analytics purposes and just to view the trend over time. That's it for the system. You can then certainly add a view here on the page directly of the latest proposals, for example. So there will be a linked view using a linked view of database from the proposals system. Maybe you can add a gallery of, yeah, let's display none. Now we can do filter for status is accepted. And last edited time is on or after one week ago we can save for everyone and this view would then display the latest proposals that have been accepted by clients then you can decide here which properties to display exactly and that would be your home page in the grander scheme of things you can integrate this system within your own business management system if you have it in Notion already. And that can be very powerful then because it extends the possibility of your own system. So for example, if you look at the freelancer home base, that is a template that I offered, that can be a good fit in this system because here you're already managing deals, you're managing clients, you're managing projects. So if you integrate the proposal systems into this template, you can then link each proposal to a client or to a deal or have the proposal show up directly on the deal page. So inside this page here, so that you can create it directly from here, from this page. And then you can aggregate data at the client level, at the deal level, and potentially, why not, also automate the process of creating a new project whenever a proposal is in the status accepted. And that would require an external automation tool, at least for now. And that is really it. For this video if you have comments or questions you can drop them down below you can find any useful links in the description of the video thanks for watching for now and see you soon